Bonnie had a chance to chat with Father Joshua Waltz, the vocation director in the Diocese of Bismarck, North Dakota, during the Thirst Conference, and this is what they talked about. I'm here with Father Waltz, the vocations director for the Diocese of Bismarck. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, I've heard great things about what's going on in vocations here in the Diocese of Bismarck. So tell me a little bit about what makes the place on fire. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a kind of a collaboration of a lot of things. So the first thing would be our Catholic schools. Um, we have a great uh, network that we've developed within our Catholic schools. We have two priests uh, in each school. Um, and that's that's a lot of that has come because of the vocation boom, so we can use more priests, uh, younger priests. And I think one of the keys to vocations, I don't think it's rocket science, um, they just need to be one-on-one -on -one with good priests. And that can be in the parish, that can be in youth groups, that can be in the high school. The reason why we chose the high school to be kind of our priority is because that's where they're going to get the most time. They're getting bombarded uh, with the secular world. And if we can have eight hours a day, every day of the week, except for the weekends, with them, and then do retreats on the weekends, go to their football games, their soccer games, their basketball games, and really just invest in the kid. And if you win the kids, you win the parents. And if you win the parents, you win the school. And, and it's just really been an amazing thing to watch. And I think a lot of credit goes to our bishop for sacrificing and putting those priests in those uh, positions because we still have priests we need to fill in, you know, in rural North Dakota. But these guys are young, they're vibrant, and they just want to run. And they have so much energy, and these young kids have so much energy. I was a chaplain for six years, and every day it's like 150%. you got to be all in all the time. But when, you, when the kids see that you genuinely do love them and want their good, they respond in ways you can't imagine. And I attribute a lot of that to our vocation boom. Also, the University of Mary uh, has just been an instrumental uh, in, in helping us vocation-wise, uh, vocation and so I'm very grateful to them as well. So kids in high school have a natural skepticism about them. So having a priest there as an authentic presence, someone who's really enlivened by their vocation, is a great example for them. Can you tell me what the life is like for, in a typical day for a high school chaplain, as opposed to what it's like for you now as a vocations director? Yeah, it's night and day. I mean, for the chaplains, they are, they're really in front, you know, front stage, they're at everything, and you really have to pour out your heart. And, and I think that that's just the beauty of the priesthood. We're called to sacrifice, you know, self-gift, and it's just different ways of doing that. The chaplains, they're up at 5 a.m. and they're in bed at midnight, you know, and sometimes later if they have to do their preps, because not only are they chaplains, full-time chaplains, but they also teach two to three classes every day, uh, the religion classes. And I think, you know, you said something, the authenticity. There's, there's just a lack of authenticity in this world. And when young kids see the conviction in the, hearts of a young, in the heart of a young priest, that is attractive. I remember when I, was, when I was in high school and we had priests for the first time at St. Mary's High School, and these guys, they came up and I'm like, what is, there's something different about these guys. And I, I later came to see it was Jesus, you know, <laughs> and that's what really converted me was their conviction. I always say conviction converts. That's a great way to put that. What can people in the pews do to assist our vocations directors all across the United States? Well, first and foremost, I think what if they see a young man or a young woman to inform the young man or wo young woman, say, have you ever thought about the priesthood? Sometimes that all, that's all it takes. And, you know, if they don't respond to even shoot an email to the vocation director and say, hey, this guy at this parish, I think he might have a call. Because then that gives me the ability to say, well, I'm going to take a trip up there and do a little vocation, you know, talk to all these kids. Because there's only so much that I can do. And again, again, we're in a rural diocese, so the travel is, you know, I can travel anywhere from a half hour to four and a half, five hours to get to one place. Um, and so we need the help of the people telling us, speaking to us, and saying what to do and who to meet with. So I think that's a huge thing. And second of all, their prayers. Their prayers are just instrumental. We started a holy hour for vocations about, I think, 15 years ago. And it's been going strong ever since, and we're at record numbers right now. So just ask the master of the harvest, and he'll provide laborers for his harvest. That's a very uh, lovely way to put that. Uh, where can people learn more about the vocations office for the Diocese of Bismarck? Uh, our website is great, uh, bismarckdiocese.com, or you can just type in bismarckvocations.com. Uh, we have videos. We have videos of the seminarians telling their vocation stories. I told my vocation story on YouTube. Uh, which was just, it's a whole crazy story behind that and how that's helped people across the nation, across the globe in some ways. 
Um, we have homilies on there. We have a lot of different assets for people to use and, and to help them discern. Great. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. I appreciate it. Back to the rest of this of the day.